Hello kids, it's me again, and honestly, I've never been so excited to make a video. I've talked about this on my Twitter, which you should be following, and my community tab. About two months ago, I lamented the fact that there seemed to be no Sims-related iceberg images, but it seems my pleas have been heard, and there are now three Sims iceberg images. Today, I'll be going over one of them, plus adding a few entries from the others, and some that weren't there that I thought were worth mentioning. But what's an iceberg image? The whole craze started about seven months ago when fellow YouTuber Mishkaz uploaded his Mario 64 iceberg video explaining urban legends and fan theories surrounding Mario 64. The higher on the iceberg, the more well-known they were, and the lower on the iceberg, the more obscure they were. Since then, there have been all kinds of iceberg images. Lost media, Minecraft, Roblox, and now, The Sims. By the way, to avoid over-explaining things, I'm going to assume those watching have a basic knowledge of The Sims series. And if you don't, maybe this video will push you to peruse The Sims wiki. Also, I may get some things wrong during this, and if I do, feel free to correct me in the comments below. So without further delay, let's dive into the icy waters of The Sims iceberg. Abduction of Bella Goth. So this one will be well known by anyone who has played Sims 2 for the PC. The game starts about 25 years after The Sims 1, and in Pleasant View, where the Goths reside, Bella is missing. The story goes that she was abducted by aliens on the roof of Don Lothario's condo. The thing is, the aliens didn't bring her back like they usually do when Sims get abducted. So what actually happened to her is the subject of speculation and theorizing by fans. Drowning of Skip Broke. Another entry hailing from Pleasant View, this one centers around the rather mysterious drowning of Skip Broke, Brandy Broke's dead husband. On the Broke lot, there is a very tiny pool with no ladder. The story goes that he drowned after a pool ladder accident. A lot of people who play The Sims love to relish in the many creative ways their Sims can die, and making them swim in the pool and taking away the ladder to make them drown is a common one. And that's how our friend Skip died. However, it doesn't make much sense in-universe because only players can remove ladders. So who did it? And what's even stranger is that there is no urn or tombstone on the broke lot for Skip. Did he actually die? Or did he just skip town upon learning Brandy was pregnant again? Here's a fan theory of mine. Skip isn't dead. He faked his own death and left town. The Brokes are known for being, well, broke. And with a kid in school, a toddler, and a baby on the way, Skip just couldn't deal with the financial strain. So instead of dealing with it, he faked his own death and went to start a new life. Bleak, but despite what EA wants you to think these days, the series hasn't always been sunny, happy, and devoid of drama. Olive Spectre is a serial killer. Now we enter Strange Town. If you've played the Spectre household, you'll notice there are several gravestones on the lot. This theory suggests Olive killed all of them, especially considering some of the gravestones belong to Olive's former husbands and even her sister. Her motive is unknown, but it's speculated that she keeps killing so that she can continue to see the Grim Reaper. Dawn's Affairs This one doesn't have much to it. Dawn Lothario, who lives in Pleasant View, is romantically involved with multiple women. He is a romance sim, after all. His name is a play on words. Dawn, referring to Don Juan, legendary seducer, and Lothario, which is a man who behaves selfishly and irresponsibly in his sexual relationships with women. When the game starts, his current loves are the Caliente sisters, Kaylin Langerak, who is his maid, and Cassandra Goth, daughter of Bella and Mortimer, who he is engaged to. According to his memories, Don also tried to seduce Bella but was unsuccessful. Fun fact, if you play the goth household and have Cassandra get married to Don at the arch in their yard, there's a chance he will leave her at the altar since he didn't want to be engaged to her to begin with. Simlish Simlish is the made-up language made by series creator Will Wright specifically for The Sims games. It actually didn't debut in a Sims game, but rather a game called Simcopter in 1996. It uses a modified Greek and Latin symbols for its alphabet. There are several fan-made Simlish fonts out there that you can use, and they're pretty cool and different since there doesn't seem to be a concrete Simlish alphabet. 
E-Axis hasn't put out any kind of similish to English dictionary since it's entirely improvised gibberish, but there are some repeated words whose meanings we can guess. For example, sulsul, which means both hello and goodbye, like aloha. Unlike other fictional conlangs like Klingon or Elvish, since Simlish doesn't have any structure whatsoever, and again, is entirely improvised, there isn't really any way to learn the language. What's more fun about Simlish are the Simlish versions of popular songs that are used for the radio stations in-game, and there are videos of singers recording those songs. I'm sure you've seen the Katy Perry one by now. Perbidex, wara ufa munarex, rimpy fervor perbidex, wara ufa munarex. Fun fact. The Simlish version of Pressure by Paramore in Sims 2 for the PlayStation 2 is what got me into them. Strange Town Bella. This one's a fun mystery hailing from Strange Town. There exists a version of Bella Goth as a townie. The thing about this Bella though is that she has a different face, personality, and voice. This Bella also has no memories. There are some odd quirks with this Bella as well if you dig into her data using a program like SimPE. She is related to several playable Strangetown Sims. There are a few theories as to why this is, but here's one that I like. Maybe Strangetown Bella is the Pleasant View Bella like Anna Anderson is to Anastasia Romanov. Anna Anderson was a woman who claimed to be the at the time unaccounted for daughter of the slain Romanov royal family. Maybe Strange Town Bella, whose real name may be Kitty Curious according to the other languages in the game, heard of Pleasant View Bella's disappearance, realized she had a passing resemblance to her, and started claiming she was the real Bella Goth. Dina and Nina This entry states that sisters Dina and Nina Caliente had something to do with Bella's disappearance. Fun fact, the Caliente sisters are part alien. Their granddad, Nestor, got abducted by aliens and, as is prone to happening to male sims, got inseminated by them. As a result, Flamenco, the twins' dad, was born, making them one-fourth alien. The theory goes that the sisters, for whatever reason, conspired with Don Lothario and their alien relatives to have Bella snatched and never return. Was Don mad he couldn't seduce Bella and asked his other flings to take care of her? Did Mortimer want her out of his life and ask his new love interest Dina to take care of her? Was there some misunderstanding where Nina was convinced Don and Bella were romantically involved and asked her alien pals to get rid of her so that she can have Don alter herself? Will we ever know what really happened? Nervous subject. In Strange Town, there is a family called the Beakers. There's husband Loki, wife Cersei, and a sim called Nervous Subject. He lives in the basement of the Beaker House, which is really just a pit in the ground since basements aren't in The Sims 2. There are also a bunch of weird machines in the Beaker Household that can be used for, well, torture. <laughs> the Beakers are a mad scientist couple and nervous is their subject. He got taken away from his mother, Olive Spectre, when he was just a baby and was adopted by the Beakers and has been living with them ever since constantly being subjected to cruel experiments. Sims Timeline The main Sims games for the PC are set on a timeline. First, The Sims 3, where we can see Bella Goth, now Bella Bachelor, and Mortimer Goth as children. Then, The Sims 1, which has Bella and Morty as adults, with Cassandra, their daughter, as a child. And then The Sims 2, where Morty is an elder, Cassandra is an adult, and Alexander is a child. Each game is 25 years apart. Then, there's The Sims 4. Back in 2014, before the game's release, it was stated by one of the sim gurus that it was too complicated to fit The Sims 4 onto the apparently crowded timeline. So The Sims 4 takes place on an alternate timeline. But the Goths are there, the Calientes are there, and they have a new mom named Katrina for some reason, and Don Lothario is there, all in Willow Creek in Oasis Springs. Plus a bunch of other Sims 2 pre-mades are available for download on the gallery. Why? Well, it's been no secret that as the years have drawn on, it seems that EXs, The Sims team, whatever you know them as, have cared less and less about the series and their fans, and see the game as one tremendous cash grab. After all, The Sims 4 wasn't originally going to be a main series game. More on that later. Lolita Goth In The Sims 3, there is a ghost by the name of Lolita Goth who haunts the Goth family, but she's not actually a member of the family. She doesn't show up in any family trees, and she isn't mentioned in any other games. She apparently died by electrocution. 
So, who is she? Some theories include her being the sister of Gunther and Frida, the ex-lover of Gunther, or based off of Debbie from the movie Adam's Family Values, who also gets electrocuted. The prevailing theory seems that she was the underage ex-lover of Gunther. Her name is Lolita after all. However, as someone who suffered through most of the book before quitting and watching the 1997 movie instead, the theorist on the Sims wiki calling Lolita the underage mistress to Humbert Humbert instead of what she really was, a kidnapped, abused child, just made me a little salty. Strangerville. This is one of the rare Sims 4 theories on this iceberg, and it's about Strangerville, which is a world introduced in a game pack of the same name. Strangerville is a pretty clear rip of Sims 2's Strange Town, but this time there's a mystery that you can actually solve. I never actually did it because it's kinda uninteresting, and apparently people don't like to be spoiled on it, so I'll just give you the premise. When the player first loads the town of Strangerville, some town locals are clearly infected with a mysterious illness. A possessed emotion, a strange walk style, and talking gibberish about a mother plant. Strange blue alien plants also dot the town. It is up to the player to investigate by talking to locals and explore the secret lab in order to find a cure for the strange illness. It's probably loads of fun, but I'll never know since I'm too preoccupied with my custom Sims 2 neighborhood. Oh well. Feuding Families Although I am an avid Sims 2 player, the only two neighborhoods I play, aside from the ones I've made, are Pleasant View and Strange Town. I know, how boring. But there exists a third pre-made hood from the Sims 2's base game, Veronaville. There are two dueling families in the neighborhood, the Montes and the Caps. I'm sure you Shakespeare fans are already drawing connections. Yes, there is a neighborhood in the Sims 2 based off of the famous play Romeo and Juliet. I'm not sure why this is low in the iceberg since it's pretty obvious, but I myself didn't know that was the case until I had to read Romeo and Juliet when I was in the ninth grade. Von Haunt Estate The Von Haunt Estate is the chalet gardens lot located in Windenburg in The Sims 4. It's also haunted by the previous owners. The theory goes that the previous owners, Berard and Mimsy Shallot, were killed in the fire that partially destroyed the estate. It's not really a theory since the plaques located throughout the manor explain what happened. I guess the theory stems from the fact that Bernard, a troubled painter, liked to burn his paintings and likely started the fire that killed him and his wife. Spooky. Who knew The Sims 4 actually had fun lore? I sure didn't. Death's Son Remember our pal, Nervous Subject? Well, this theory states that he's the son of the Grim Reaper. His mother, Olive Spectre, has a memory of woohooing with the Grim Reaper, and a memory of giving birth to Nervous not long after. Perhaps the Beakers had some hand in getting him taken away by social workers, so they could perform experiments on Death's son. Of course, in normal gameplay you can't seduce the Grim Reaper and become inseminated by him, but it's possible with cheats. Eye contact. This one's fun. In The Sims 2, your Sims will look directly at you through your computer screen. I found this happens when you make them do a task they hate, a task they love, or sometimes randomly. Are they aware you're there? Do they know you're controlling them? Bella Goth on Lunar Lakes Lunar Lakes is a world that can be purchased from the Sims 3 store. It is set on a different planet, I guess kind of similar to Sims 4 6 am. Anyway, in a graveyard on Lunar Lakes is a gravestone for none other than Bella Goth, who died of old age. This one's kinda old, considering this is The Sims 3, where Bella is canonically a child and, you know, alive. That being said, Lunar Lakes is actually placed in the future. This theory suggests Bella, after being snatched by aliens in the events preceding The Sims 2, was dropped off at Lunar Lakes where she lived the rest of her days. Lunar Lakes appears to be pretty far in the future, so it still looks like some time travel was involved. The Remingtons In The Sims 3 World Riverview, there is a family called the Joneses, consisting of husband Aiden and wife Hannah, whose maiden name is Remington. Hannah inherited the home from her family, who are all deceased and who all haunt the home as ghosts. There's Hannah's mother Lydia, who drowned, Lydia's brother Jasper, who was electrocuted, Jasper's wife Eileen, who starved, Jasper and Eileen's son Cody, who died in a fire, and Cody's sister Kristen, who drowned. How did all these sims meet such an untimely fate? Did Hannah have a hand in it so she could inherit the house?
Donnie Darko. The Social Bunny is a special NPC in The Sims 2 that visits Sims when their social need is too low so that these Sims can socialize with the bunny and bring their needs back up. Only the Sim with the low social need can see the Social Bunny, but multiple Sims can spawn the Social Bunny if they have a low enough social need. This entry states that the Social Bunny is based off of Frank from the 2001 movie Donnie Darko. Similarly to the game, Frank is a one-eyed fella in a rabbit costume that only Donnie, played by Jake Gyllenhaal, can see and interact with. Olive loves the Grim Reaper. This entry ties a few previous entries together. So we've established Olive Spectre may be a serial killer, and we've also established that she woohooed with Grim and had nervous after that. This entry theorizes that Olive isn't some malicious serial killer. She kills because she's in love with the Grim Reaper, and the only way she can see him is if someone dies. How sad. Clown Catchers. This will be one of the few entries where I don't quite know everything. The Tragic Clown is an NPC that appears in The Sims 1 if you have a Tragic Clown painting and if a Sim on the lot has low needs. He tries to help Sims cheer up, but it doesn't quite work because he is quite depressed himself. To get rid of the Tragic Clown, you have a few options. One of them is calling the Clown Catchers to capture the Tragic Clown and remove the painting from your Sims house so he doesn't return. This entry states that the government is trying to capture the Tragic Clown for some reason. What would the government want with a depressed circus clown that spawns from paintings? Sorry to say this, but I have no idea. Twinbrook. This one I couldn't find much information on. At the time of me writing this, I don't have The Sims 3 installed, so I can't investigate for myself, but apparently the graves in the graveyard of Twinbrook are all dummy placeholder graves, with real graves being scattered around the world. Interestingly, Twinbrook is based off of waterlogged, swampy Louisiana suburbs. In the lower parts of Louisiana, you can't bury people below ground because eventually their coffins and remains will rise to the surface. That's why there are so many above ground graves there. My theory is that Twinbrook got flooded at some point, causing a bunch of graves to essentially float around town and be deposited in random places when the flood water subsided. Other than that, I don't really know. Cordelia and Caliban Cap Cordelia and Caliban Cap are the deceased parents of Juliet Cap in Veronaville, who apparently died in a fire. This entry erroneously states that Cordelia was pregnant when she died, but that's untrue. Romeo, Juliet's love interest, also has two deceased parents. His mother, Olivia, was the one who was pregnant when she died. The real mystery here is why Romeo and Juliet's parents are deceased since, according to the Sims wiki, both sets of parents were intended to be playable. It was likely a last-minute decision, as Veronaville as a whole seemed to be riddled with errors. Magic Ban Yet another entry I have no idea about. It states that magic was criminalized by the Sims 2 timeline. There's not much evidence in the game that this was the case. Sims who are witches and use magic aren't penalized in any way. Sure, there are good witches and evil witches, but even evil witches aren't shunned or anything. If anyone knows anything about this, don't hesitate to comment because I'd like to know. Murder in Pleasant View In The Sims 3, there exists a mystery book called Murder in Pleasant View, written by Alexander Goth, which is weird because his mother, Bella, is a child in the game, meaning he wouldn't have existed, right? Well, in the Ambitions expansion pack, there is a time machine. So, time travel seems to be possible in the Sims universe. It's not outside of the realm of possibility that, as an adult, Alexander Goth, who many people headcanon as some kind of scientist or inventor when he gets older, invents a time machine, learns how his mother disappears, writes a book about it, and returns to the past to publish it? Not sure why he would do that, though. Sunny the Tragic Clown In The Sims 1, the Tragic Clown is alive and present. In The Sims 3, the tragic clown is dead and a ghost. How is that possible? Well, there are a few ways. Maybe the tragic clown is just a title and is passed on from Sim to Sim. After Sims 3's tragic clown drowns, another takes up the mantle in The Sims 1. Or the tragic clown is still dead in The Sims 1 and is some kind of ghost that haunts his portraits, hence why he's able to emerge from them. That may also be why the government is supposedly haunting him. They want to capture a ghost and perform experiments on it. The Tree Coo Family 
The Triku family is yet another entirely deceased family in The Sims, this time The Sims 2. All but two members died by starvation, with one dying by falling satellite and the other dying in a fire. What's odd is that the Trikus died after moving into their home, the House of Falling Trees, which is in the downtown subhood. What's even more odd is that no matter how many lights you place in the house, it's always somewhat dim. Maybe the house has some kind of evil quality that led the Trikus to their deaths. Opal Swirly This one I genuinely have no idea. Opal Swirly is a pre-made deceased sim in The Sims 3 who died by drowning. Her tombstone is next to the tragic clowns, who as we know also died by drowning. That's it, that's their only connection. If someone could provide some insight, that would be great. Running with Scissors once upon a time, there existed an official website for The Sims 2. On that site, you could download objects to use in your game. One of those objects was the Running with Scissors playset, which is just a large pair of scissors. If your sim holds the scissors while running, they have a chance to die. My mom always told me not to run with scissors, I guess I know why now. Lila Grunt Lila Grunt is one of the deceased sims in All the Spectre's Garden who died by electrocution. She is the mother of pre-made sims Tank, Rip, and Butt Grunt, and the ex-wife of General Buzz Grunt. Her children and ex-husband are strangely unaware of her death, as they have no memories of it. This could make sense, since after moving out of the Grunt home, the other members could have lost contact with her. It is really sad knowing that the kids, who love their mother very much, are just waiting for her to visit, not knowing they'll never see her again. You have been chosen. In The Sims 1, your Sims have a chance to be prank called, and some of them are kind of weird. Notable examples include, you have been chosen, they will come soon, the drop off has been made, you've been warned, and they're coming soon. Maybe you should think twice about opening the door. Ookie spooky. Accidental Incest In The Sims 2, if a baby, toddler, or child is not cared for properly, a social worker will come and take them away. Once they are in the system, their memories of their blood family will be erased. Once adopted by another family, they will become part of their new family's family tree, meaning that the game thinks they are no longer related to their old family. As a result, Sims who are adopted can romance with, marry, and have children with Sims from their blood family. This is likely a programming oversight. No happy ending. So this one comes from Sims 2 for the PSP, which I didn't know at first and I had to revise this entry. In that game, Nervous Subject has a girlfriend named Annie Howell. Annie is unaware of Nervous's death in the game and simply assumes he ran off with another woman. The Doe Family. The Doe family is a family residing in Midnight Hollow in The Sims 3, and seems to be a stereotypically happy 60s family. The family's description is rather innocuous, but mentions their house used to have a basement. This could be some kind of Stepford Wives reference. The family is perfect on the outside, but deeply flawed. The entry also states that Jane Doe and John Doe are placeholder names used for unidentified corpses. Self-aware. This entry actually hails from Sims 2 for the PSP, which my brother had back in the day and never let me play. Anyway, in this console port, there is a character named Dr. Dominic Nulo, and he is the main antagonist of the game. Apparently, Dr. Dominic knows the plumb bob is what's controlling his actions. Which, yeah, he's right. Plumb bobs only appear over Sims' heads if they're being controlled by the player. While I never got to play this Sims 2 console port, I think this fourth wall breaking storyline is nice. Haunted Doll Virus This one's a fun, sort of, urban legend. The story goes like this. In the summer of 2010, players noticed a certain dot .package file attaching itself to other packages in The Sims 3's Exchange, which is The Sims 3's version of the gallery. The dot .package file was a custom doll object, which was cloned from the teddy bear. The doll, when downloaded, caused the game to slow down and even crash. Eventually, a guide was posted on how to get rid of it, and EA actually addressed it themselves. In actuality, the doll was likely just a poorly made object some amateur CC creator made and uploaded to the exchange, 
not knowing how incredibly buggy it was. It wasn't a true virus since it only affected the game and not your computer as a whole. Could you imagine though, some creepy Annabelle like doll annoyingly installed to your game that wreaks havoc on it? I'm getting shivers. Cersei's Affair This one also comes from Sims 2 for the PSP. In the game, Cersei Beaker has been hypnotized by Dr. Dominic Newell and has been forced to be in a relationship with him even though she's married to Loki. That seems to be all there is to it. I mean, it is pretty creepy and weird, but why so low on the iceberg? Kidnapped Yet again, we visit Sims 2 for the PSP. In this game, the Beakers have kidnapped a new test subject by the name of Gimme Branko, who the player ends up liberating from the Beaker household. Why did they need a new test subject? Well, it seems they killed Nervous Subject with their experiments, since he's a ghost in the game. Newt Futa Newt Futa is a delivery man, and one of the Sims Olive Spectre may or may not have killed. He is also incredibly broken. While Olive has a memory of him dying, he has no gravestone on her lot and does not appear as a ghost. While other hidden sims can be found fully formed in the game files, Newt has no age, personality, genetics, skills, interests, memories, or relationships. Basically, nothing but his appearance can be found. Trying to bring him back will only result in corrupting the game. Sims 2 for DS I have no clue why this one is so far down on the iceberg. Sims 2 for the DS is one of the many ports of The Sims 2, and like the other console ports, it differs from the PC version in that there's a linear storyline. In this version, your Sims car breaks down in Strangetown, and through some series of events, you become the proprietor of a hotel. There are three main quests, and your main goal is to expand and improve your hotel, keeping your guests happy. This game is also in real time like Animal Crossing. Instead of the needs system, your sim has a sanity meter that goes up by using the shower, eating, or sleeping, and goes down by being out in the desert or being abducted by aliens who are, for some reason, one of the hostile antagonists of the game. Fun fact, I had this game and many other Sims 2 ports for the DS when I was a kid, and it was one of my favorite games. It's very different from the PC version, and I guess people think it's creepy, but it has its own charm. Another fun fact, aliens scared the heck out of me as a kid. And when I first saw them in Sims 2 for the PlayStation 2, I thought they would be evil there. They weren't. Ghost children. In The Sims 2, only Sims who are children or older can die and become ghosts. However, it seems child ghosts are pretty glitchy. They don't float like normal ghosts and are prone to spawning the Grim Reaper, Therapist, or Witch Doctor NPCs when they are not needed, which can corrupt the game. We are all Sims. This one's mostly a joke, but this entry states that we are Sims. Ever walk into a room and immediately forget what you were doing? That's because the player cancelled the action you were about to do. Think about it. OMG BBQ. This one is from The Sims community. On Mod The Sims, a website dedicated to, you guessed it, modding The Sims games, there is a creation contest with the theme of children. Well known modder JM Pescado used this contest as an opportunity to create the OMG WTF BBQ. It's a functional barbecue where you can cook and eat babies. It caused some controversy because, you know, cannibalistic infanticide, but others thought it was funny. The mod is no longer available on the site, but can probably be found if you dig deep enough. There also exists a version for The Sims 4 made by someone else. Your Sims are alive. Much like the We Are Sims theory, this entry states that your Sims are alive. Depending on your game settings, your sims do have autonomy and can act on their own desires, but must still do what you tell them. Sims 4 is a social experiment. This one certainly made me feel a type of way. This entry states that The Sims 4 is so bad because it's a social experiment. Fun fact, The Sims 4 launched on my 15th birthday on September 2nd, 2014. I was absolutely jazzed to be getting a new Sims game, and on my birthday of all days. 
I had to wait a day or two to actually play it because there weren't enough cedars on the fresh torrent, but when I actually got to play the game, I was less than excited. Firstly, the game was just poorly optimized. There wasn't even a 64-bit version until a few updates later. And it was missing a ton of features normally found in the base game, including family trees, toddlers, pools, basements, ghosts, and firefighters. Basically, EA released half a game. A few weeks after launch, I gave up on it entirely and went back to The Sims 2. Sometime in 2019, the game was free on Origins, so I decided to give it another chance. And it was a lot better. They added a lot of features that should have been in the game five years prior. In its current iteration, I do consider The Sims 4 to be quite fun, not as fun as The Sims 2, but it's a shame it took so long to get there. The Kind Society The Kind Society is a cult that appears in The Sims 2 for the PSP. It was started by Dominic Nulo in order to summon an ancient demon cow called Beelzebeef. It also makes an appearance in the DS version, where hotel guest Ava Kedavra has the player build a shrine to it in the basement of the hotel. You don't normally see things like cults in a Sims game. Mortimer killed Bella This one's fairly straightforward. Some people think Mortimer killed his beloved wife Bella for... reasons. Insurance money? To begin his affair with Dina Caliente? Because he actually hated her? Who knows? And that's it for this iceberg, but there are some that I wanted to include that weren't on any of the icebergs I found, so here they are. Server Fire After the beta version of The Sims 2 release, there is a mysterious server fire over at Maxis that caused them to have to start over from scratch with the game. There are videos of The Sims 2 beta being played, and it's quite different from the finished game. However, it's disputed if this fire happened at all. Yes, the game was clearly overhauled after the beta, but maybe it was due to executive meddling instead of a huge fire. Sims 4 Beta Way earlier in this video, I said The Sims 4 wasn't originally going to be a mainline Sims game. Way back in 2008, after the release of The Sims 3, an online game, similar to The Sims Online and The Sims Social, codenamed Olympus was in development. After the absolutely disastrous launch of SimCity 2013, which was online only even though it had literally no reason to be, and was so terrible it caused its studio, Max's Redwood, rest in peace, to close down, they cancelled the online component and thus The Sims 4 was born. I remember the screenshots of it leaked sometime in 2013 when the game was announced, and there was much discussion on the Mod The Sims forum about how terrible it looked. We all thought it looked like a phone game, and lamented the fact that it was probably going to go the way of SimCity. Thankfully, it didn't, but what we got the following year was only a little better. Symbology. RIP. Symbology was a forum dedicated to Sims 2 modding, with many well-known mods being hosted there. At around September of 2020, which is relatively recently, a message reading, So long and thanks for all the fish, Thank you to our members and staff for an amazing 15 year run, could only be seen in plain HTML. There is also a link to a Sims file share folder, with most of the files rehosted there. There have been some reports of missing files though. Symbology was a staple of the Sims 2 modding community and now it's gone. TSR The Sims resource is one of the biggest Sims custom content sites on the internet. However, it's drawn some criticism from the community, notably Mod The Sims, for some transgressions on the site. There have been reports of stolen content and a lack of moderation on the site, plus lots of people, myself included, don't like the fact that you used to have to pay for certain custom content items on the site. We all saw what happened when Bethesda tried to pull it with Skyrim, so it was met with much criticism. To my knowledge, pay downloads aren't a thing anymore, but they do have this wacky $3 a month VIP plan that gives you fast downloads, no ads, and a CC manager. Which is ridiculous because free download times aren't that slow, ad blockers exist, and there are free community-made CC management programs for every game. A lot of people see the owners of The Sims resource as greedy, earning it the pejorative T$ dollar sign R. Cursed Pets this is one that haunted me in my youth. 
If you play The Sims 3 Pets expansion and your graphics card isn't good enough, your pets will end up looking super deformed. I found this out the hard way when I installed the expansion with my crappy old Toshiba laptop. The Sims 3 is just poorly optimized in general, but this was an extreme example. Mystery Sim Mystery Sim is a mysterious sim that shows up in the memories of pre-made and player-made young adult and older sims in The Sims 2. The purpose is to give sims romance-related memories in their teens. Which is weird, considering not everyone experiences romance in their teens. Anyway, Dawn's fate. Dawn Lothario is in The Sims 3 World Riverview, not as a toddler or baby as he probably would be, but as an adult. According to his bio, he was accidentally teleported there while being laughed at by several women. What may have happened is that all of Dawn's flings got tired of him two-timing them, teamed up to acquire a time machine somehow, and shoved him in, letting fate dictate where he ended up. Where that happened to be was 25 years in the past at some abandoned granary. Plumbob. The Plumbob is the infamous symbol of the Sims series. Its look has changed throughout the years, but its shape has remained the same. A green hexagonal bipyramid which floats above the active Sims head and indicates their mood. Some have theorized it's some kind of alien mind control device that the player uses to control Sims, but in actuality it's just unique game design console ports. There are several console ports of games in the Sims series. The console ports of Sims games, aside from The Sims The Sims Bustin' Out, The Sims 3, and The Sims 4, are very different from the main series games. Fellow YouTuber Minimi has a video detailing the GBA ports of Sims games, which is a fun watch. This is because the console ports are developed specifically for the intended console and usually by different development studios. This changed with The Sims 4, where the console version is a direct conversion of the PC version. I've played a number of console ports for The Sims 2, and while some of them were boo-boo garbage, I will say, Sims 2 for the PlayStation 2 and Sims 2 for the DS still hold a special place in my heart. Corruption The Sims 2 is notably one of the buggiest games in existence. There are so many ways that you can corrupt a neighborhood, or even the whole game, and it's likely you've probably done it unknowingly. Common ways to corrupt the game are deleting sims, deleting tombstones, resurrecting pre-made dead sims, saving while sims are on the phone, and attempting to befriend and move in certain NPCs. Aside from game corruption, so much just seems to be broken or wonky in the game. Reading through the sims wikia while doing research, every pre-made sim seems to have something wrong with them. This could have something to do with the fact that The Sims 2's development after the beta era server fire that may or may not have happened was probably rushed since they started from scratch. And that'll do it for this iceberg video. We covered lots of ground, but there's still more to explore. What are some of your favorite urban legends or trivia from The Sims series? There is hardly any from The Sims 4, even though lore-wise that game is as barren as the strange town desert. And there's none for My Sims. I know it's the Babby version of the Sims game, but it's still pretty dope. Still, I'd like to know. Sound off below. And again, if I got something wrong or if you have some insight to the entries I didn't know much about, feel free to tell me in the comments below and I'll have a pinned comment with corrections. Also, if there are enough spicy theories or urban legends in the comments below, there may be another video on the horizon. Either way, that'll be it for me for this video. What did you think of this iceberg? Did you learn something new? Were you reminded of something from your bygone Sims playing days? Let me know. You can also follow me on Twitter and donate to my Kofi if you feel like it. Were you enamored by my voiceover skills? Well, you can hire me over at Fiverr, link below. Sul Sul Simmers, thanks for watching.